Yo, what's up guys? Uh, it's Noah here breaking down the NBA slate on DraftKings and Yahoo for Tuesday, December the 17th. Uh, we got a six gamer for today. We're going to run through this slate position by position. I'll give you guys some of my early thoughts on this slate, who I see at each position that stands out to me the most. Uh, just looking at this slate the night before. We'll talk about DraftKings and then we, uh, we'll talk about some Yahoo plays that I like as well. Just before we do get started, guys, as always, I would greatly appreciate it if you would drop a like down below. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. If you have not subscribed yet, I would greatly appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button. You could also click the notification bell, so that way you get notified every time I upload. Anytime I post a new video, it'll send you a notification to your phone, or it'll send you an email uh, that let, lets you know that I posted a new video. So you can do that as well. You can follow me on Twitter, stay up to date with uh, my life, just DFS. Everything about me, uh, I do post a lot on Twitter. So if you want to check me out there, you can do so at DFS by Noah. And if you want to get access to all of my exclusive content, I do provide a lot of exclusive content over on Patreon. I have a ton of NBA content going up Monday through Friday, uh, roster construction video, core plays. Um, I do a full article on the slate where I provide all my favorite plays on the slate. I do update that article as injury news breaks. So uh, if you want all my updated thoughts on the slate as injury news comes out, you can check out the Patreon. I have a ton of updated and in-depth content over there for NBA. I do also post NFL content as well throughout the week. And if you do play M NFL and NBA, I have packages where you can get uh, both sports combined for a cheaper price. So check out the Patreon. If you join by Sunday, you or not by Sunday, but by Christmas, if you join by Christmas, you will be invited to our $100 free roll contest that I will be running on the Christmas Day NBA slate. It'll be available for all Patreon members. Uh, it'll probably be about 50 or 60 of you in there, so you definitely have a chance to win. It'll most likely be a winner-take-all, so first place will get $100. This is money coming out of my pocket that I'm giving back to you guys. I always want to support those that support my content and that support me, so if you want to get a chance to win $100, uh, you can sign up through Patreon. You can become a Patreon member, and you'll get access to that $100 free roll that I'll be running on the Christmas Day NBA slate. And when we hit our next goal of 75 Patreon subscribers, I will be running another $100 free roll. Uh, over there that will be available for members. Uh, you'll, I'll just uh, send you guys the link and uh, you can join that way. But yeah, let's go ahead and uh, talk about point guard for today's slate. Go ahead and start off at the top. So LeBron is our most expensive option at point guard and he is our most expensive option on this slate. 10,900. You do also have Anthony Davis at 10,500. Those are the only two guys over 10k. Uh, Anthony Davis is questionable, which is something we haven't seen. Like he's been on the injury report pretty much every game this season, but he's always probable. Well, today he's actually questionable, so there are some chances that he could miss today. That'll definitely be something we need to keep an eye on. That'll really impact the slate. That'll really change everything if Anthony Davis is out. Uh, then you have guys like Trey Young, Kawhi Leonard, Paul George. Uh, Devin Booker sat out Monday. This is a back-to-back -back for the Suns, so we'll need to keep an eye on his status as we head into Tuesday's slate. Hopefully we'll get some word sooner on in the, or later or like earlier on in the day. But since it's a back-to-back, -back, I don't think they'll host a shoot-around, so we probably won't know till like later on in the night, which sucks. Plus, this is a 10:30 game; it's the last game on the slate, so I would say it's probably unlikely we get that news before lock. But I guess we'll just wait and see. So, starting off with LeBron at point guard, I definitely like LeBron on this slate here against the Pacers, especially if Anthony Davis sits. Like with the possibility that Anthony Davis is going to sit, I mean, I think already that LeBron is one of the better plays on the slate, the better stud options. But given the possibility that Anthony Davis could miss this game, I mean, that would just make LeBron the easiest play on the slate. He'd be the top stud by a pretty wide margin. I mean, the dude's just been awesome as of late. He's given you such a high floor this season. You pretty much have like a 45 to 50 point floor from LeBron. Like even in his worst games, he's getting you 45 to 50 DraftKings points. He still has that pretty high ceiling, 65 to 70 DK point ceiling. If Anthony Davis is out, that obviously increases his, increases his ceiling by quite a bit. I mean, we can run the numbers this season with Anthony Davis off the floor just so you guys could see uh, just so you guys could see the difference. I imagine there's a very drastic difference for LeBron. And obviously if Anthony Davis were to sit, that would open up some value from the Lakers that we can definitely talk about later on in the video. Uh, but LeBron's played 295 minutes this season with AD off the floor, 39.1% usage rate, averaging 1.64 fantasy points per minute, 44.4% assist percentage and a 13% total rebound percentage. Like those are up there with like James Harden, Giannis Antetokounmpo, like those are some of the best numbers you'll see in the league. So LeBron's a great play today. He's an even better play if AD's out. Definitely one of my favorite studs, and I'll have a ton of him if Davis sits. I'll still have quite a bit of him, even if Anthony Davis plays. 
even though it's a tough matchup against the Pacers, like the Pacers just don't have somebody they can put on LeBron that's going to slow him down. Like I guess they'll try and use maybe TJ Warren or Jeremy Lamb, but those guys really don't stand a chance against LeBron James. Malcolm Brogdon's a really good defender, but he's definitely undersized compared to LeBron. Uh, so LeBron should just be able to have his way. I mean, the dude's one of the more matchup-proof guys in the league. Like it doesn't matter who's on him. He's going to find a way to uh, make an impact on the floor. But then you have Trey Young for $1,000 cheaper against the Knicks. I mean, not the best matchup. You would think, like, Knicks, terrible defensive team. But this is actually a tougher spot. Like, point guards against the Knicks, not the best spot. Because they do have Frank Nilakina, who is one of the better defenders in this league. Uh, that's one of the things that Nilakina is really good at is defense. Not saying he's going to shut down Trey Young. Uh, but I could definitely see Young maybe struggling a little bit here. And 9900 he's closely priced to LeBron that I think I would try and get up to LeBron. And if Anthony Davis plays, I would prefer to get to Anthony Davis for just 600 more. Plus, you do have Kawhi and PG for cheaper. So I don't think Trey Young's going to be a core play for me today. Just kind of would be a guy I would sprinkle in if I'm playing like a lot of lineups. Uh, that's really it. Then you have Devin Booker against the Clippers. That's just kind of a wait and see for me. Like Even if Booker plays today, I don't have a ton of interest in him at 8300 If he's out, though, that'll open up some plays from the Suns that we will talk about. Really isn't much I like in the mid-range. Like, Devontae Graham's a fine play at 7,800, but not going to be a core play for me by any means. Plus, uh, there's guys I like that are cheaper today. De'Aaron Fox is questionable, so that'll be something we need to keep an eye on. I mean, even if he plays at 7,700, like, I'd imagine he's going to be limited. He hasn't played in over a month. Uh, he is expected to play today, so that'll definitely take away usage from guys like Buddy Heald, Bogdanovich, Corey Joseph will move back to the bench. Not really much that changes from or with Fox being in I mean that's not going to change much for me and I don't have interest in him at 7700 if I'm going to play guys in this price range like I think the two guys I'd like the most are definitely uh, Drew Holiday at 7700 really like him on Yahoo uh, I think that's where he really stands out because he's shooting guard over there you have to play at least one shooting guard on Yahoo and if you just look at the position you got Booker at 37 you got Mitchell at 37 as well Donovan Mitchell I'll probably be off of today uh, we do know that Mike Conley is probable, so Mike Conley is expected to play today. That's going to take away a little bit of usage from Mitchell. With De'Aaron Fox coming back, don't have as much interest in Buddy Heald. I think I would definitely play Holiday over him at the same salary. You do have Devontae Graham for a dollar cheaper than uh, Drew Holiday, so that's close between those two guys as who's my favorite shooting guard to go to. I still would prefer Drew Holiday here. I mean, this is a really good spot for him against Brooklyn. Uh, Brooklyn has played at a pretty fast pace this season. Obviously, you're not really going to get like pace-up spots for the Pelicans because of how fast they play. I mean, they're not really ever going to be in a pace-up spot. But Brooklyn also plays pretty fast, top 10 in pace. So you got two top 10 teams in pace this season. Should be a really fast-paced game. I believe this game does have a total on it right now. Yeah, Brooklyn-New Orleans has a 230.5 total with a one-point uh, one point spread. So this is going to be like one of the better games of the night to target. Really like Drew Holiday at $34 on Yahoo. He definitely stands out as one of the better shooting guard options. There are some cheaper guys you could go to, like R.J. Barrett for $16, I think really stands out if you want to go to him for value. Uh, but I'll probably be trying to pay up in this position for Drew Holiday at $34. Uh, he's also a solid play at $7,700 on DK. You could definitely look to him over there. Uh, Ricky Rubio I played quite a bit of on Monday Night Slate over on Yahoo. He was like $30 on Monday night. I think it had him in like 30 to 40% of my lineups. Uh, we got the news that Devin Booker was going to be out. We got that news about an hour before uh, tip-off, so... I tried to switch some of my exposure from guys I had over to Rubio because I really had a lot of interest in him. I'll definitely be interested in him again today. 7,600 on DK. He's not like a smash play. Uh, he's just more of a secondary option, whereas on Yahoo at $30, uh, he would definitely be one of my favorite plays at point guard if Devin Booker is out. He does see a nice bump in usage with Booker off the floor this season. But then you got guys like Dinwiddie, Brogdon. Uh, Dinwiddie against the Pelicans I do have interest in I think I just slightly prefer Drew Holiday though for 200 more so it's hard for me to consider Dinwiddie like a core play today probably more of a secondary option uh, Terry Rozier for 6200 I think's a fine mid-range option against the Kings I mean he's coming off a bad game against the Pacers tough matchup 11 DK points in 25 minutes I would definitely expect a bounce back game from him I mean for what it's worth he put up 46 DK points earlier this season against the Kings in 34 minutes uh, he's playing huge minutes every night, 36, close to 38 minutes a night. Uh, I mean, he's definitely in play at 6,200 if you want to go to him in that mid-range. For value, though, at point guard, if you're going cheap here, like Lonzo's really cheap, but it's hard to trust him coming off the bench. We just don't know what we're going to get from him. I mean, he played 27 minutes last game against the Magic, 26 DK points. 
I just don't want to go to him as like a core play today, 5K. Like even though he's cheap, he's probably more of a secondary option. I just don't expect him to play as many minutes when he's coming off the bench. So that way, or so, like for that reason, it's kind of hard for me to trust him. Uh, RJ Barrett, though, I do like a lot today as a value play. I think he's one of the better value options on this slate, at least as of now. 4500 on DK. Uh, on Yahoo, he's at $16. I talked about him at shooting guard. So he's coming off two really bad performances against the Kings and the Nuggets. Uh, only 16 and 11 DraftKings points in those two games. He still played 31 in 36 minutes, though. His price was 6100 in that game against the Kings. Then it dropped down to 5400 and now he's 4500 in a matchup at home against the Hawks. I mean... This is an awesome spot for R.J. Barrett. Uh, the Hawks, I believe, have allowed, like, towards the top of the league in terms of fantasy points allowed to point guards. Trey Young's, like, one of the worst defenders in the league. Really good matchup for Barrett. His price tag has plummeted uh, now that his per- or now that we've had poor performances from him. But you could argue those are two tough matchups. I mean, the Kings isn't that tough a matchup, but at Denver, like, that's a really tough spot for R.J. Barrett. Now he gets to go back home and face the Hawks. Much easier matchup for him to te- uh, for him today. Definitely have a lot of interest in him at 4,500. Uh, really stands out as one of the better values at this position if you are going cheap. Frank Nielakina, I do expect to play a decent amount of minutes today. They're going to need his defense on Trey Young. He's only 3,600. You never know what you're going to get from this guy. Like He's not that productive of a fantasy player. He's, he did put up 13, 5, and 4, though, in his last game against Denver with four steals. Uh, 24 minutes in that game. I believe he does continue to start. I believe they've, they've been starting him alongside uh, R.J. Barrett. So if he continues to start, I mean, 3,600, definitely could look to him as a value. They're going to need his defense on Trey Young today, uh, so you could go there as a cheap option. I would try and get up to R.J. Barrett, though, if possible. But let's go ahead and talk about some shooting guard plays now. Look at this position. So at shooting guard today, at the top here, you got Kawhi Leonard, 9,400 against the Suns. I uh, don't think Kawhi's going to be like a top play for me on this slate. I mean, he's a solid option at 9,400, especially if Lou Williams is out today. We'll need to keep an eye on the status of Lou Williams because that is pretty big. Uh, With Lou Williams off the floor, that just really uh, opens up more usage for guys like Kawhi Leonard, uh, Paul George. I believe it was their, like, I think it was a Friday night game, that Friday night game against the Timberwolves. At halftime, literally Paul George and Kawhi Leonard were the only starters that had scored. I believe Harkless had zero points, Zubak had zero points, and uh, Terrence Mann had zero points at halftime. Like, Kawhi and PG are just going to do everything. They're going to do all the heavy lifting if Lou Williams remains out. So, I would have a lot more interest in Kawhi if Williams is out. I'd still think he'd probably be a secondary option. I'd probably slightly prefer uh, Paul George for $600 less. But I try. this definitely feels like a slate where I want to try and get uh, to LeBron if possible. And unless we get a lot of value, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get Kawhi and LeBron together, like, in the same lineup. Uh, but just in the mid-range at shooting guard... I mean, Donovan Mitchell, not interested in him. Like, the guys I talked about here, uh, Holiday and um, Didwitty, you could look to at this position. Uh, th- I still think Terry Rozier is a solid option in the mid-range. Joe Ingles, I'm off of him now that Conley's back. He's just going to lose minutes. Uh, Bogdanovich, I'm not that big of a fan of now that De'Aaron Fox is expected to play. Josh Hart, though, is the guy that I want to talk about at shooting guard. I think he is one of the better standout values, at least as of now. So we do know that uh, J.J. Redick is going to be out for this game. I believe Reddick played in that game against the Magic, but I think he got hurt, if I'm not mistaken. I can check that real quick, just so we can see. So Reddick did play 36 minutes in that game against the Magic, but he got hurt, at least, I guess, after the game or during the game, and he has been ruled out for Tuesday. So I imagine we're going to see a guy like uh, Josh Hart pick up a lot of those minutes that J.J. Reddick was playing. I mean, Hart played 31 minutes last game against the Magic, with Reddick playing 36 minutes as well. So there's a chance we get like 32 to 34 minutes from Josh Hart today, if not more. He probably moves into the starting lineup as well and takes uh, Reddick's spot. Really like him as a value play. Only 4700 on DK. Uh, he's really cheap on Yahoo as well. He's at small forward and he's only $15. Uh, definitely stands out as one of the better just values overall. Really good game here to target. I mean, two fast-paced teams. Highest total on the slate right now. Close one-point spread. That's what you want to target in NBA DFS and... Today we're getting a guy uh, in Josh Hart who's going to see a lot more minutes with Redick out. He's been a productive player as well. I can pull up his numbers this season uh, with the Pelicans. I guess we could take Redick off the floor since Redick's going to be out. Don't know if that's like a big difference for Hart, but I guess we can see. So Hart's played 303 minutes with Redick off the floor. Not a high usage player, but does average .82 fantasy points per minute. Uh, one thing that's notable is that his total rebound percentage is 13.3%. Uh, Josh Hart is one of the one of the better rebounding guards in the league. 
Uh, so definitely a guy that I like quite a bit as a value, especially if we're going to see him play more minutes today and potentially start 4,700, a really solid value option. Then you got R.J. Barrett for 4,500, who you can consider, who you could consider. I like him a lot as a value play today. Hopefully he comes in low owned, but I imagine with his price as low as it is in the matchup, I mean, he should be really popular today. Uh, Mikel Bridges, I will definitely have interest in if Devin Booker remains out. He started that last game against the Spurs. Uh, had 27 DK points, played 32 minutes. He started on Monday night, and as I'm recording this video, he's having a pretty solid game on Monday night. So I'll definitely be going to Bridges as a value if Booker's out. Uh, even in a tough matchup against the Clippers, he's still really, really cheap. And then Nilakina, you could take a shot on as well. I do expect him to play pretty solid minutes here. Uh, they're going to need his defense against Trey Young. But yeah, small forward. So looking at this position, you do have Paul George, 8,800 against the Suns. I mean, PG and Kawhi are probably going to be secondary options for me. Unless uh, Lou Williams is out, then they would definitely enter like consideration as core plays because both these guys do see bumps with Lou Williams off the floor. They're just going to have to do a lot of the heavy lifting. I mean, PG had like, he had 66 DK points in that game against Minnesota. Uh, that game that Lou Will was out, 39 minutes from Paul George. 8,800 on DK, really good matchup against the Suns. I'm, that's just kind of a wait and see for me today. Like, I'm only going to target PG or Kawhi if Lou Williams is out. And hopefully we get that news before lock, but I don't know if we will since it's a 10-30 game. Uh, Brandon Ingram's pretty solid option as well for 8,100. Probably more interest in him on Yahoo. Uh, if we look at the Yahoo pricing, like Paul George is $43. Um, Kawhi is $46. And then Brandon Ingram's all the way down there at 36 So, like, definitely like Brandon Ingram the most between, like, PG, Kawhi and or PG Kawhi Ingram, like give me Ingram on Yahoo at $36. Between those three guys on DraftKings, I'd probably side with Paul George. If Lou Will's out, if Lou Will plays, it's pretty close. I think it'd probably go to Ingram at 8,100 if Lou Will plays, because I would definitely take my interest away from, or take some of my interest away from Kawhi and PG. Other small forwards, though, in the mid range, really not much that stands out here. I mean, Marcus Morris is a fine play at 6,200. Really good matchup for him against the Hawks. Never a guy that I feel like I have to play, though, especially when he's over, like, 6K. I mean, there was a time where he was, like, 5K for a decent stretch, and, like, he was pretty chalky for a lot of those slates. Now that he's up to 6,200, like, he needs to go for over 40 DraftKings points to be, like, a really good tournament play at that salary. And uh, just, I don't think you're going to get 40 DK points from Morris most nights. He's going to be in that, like, 30 to, or, like, that low 30s range, high, uh, high 20 range most nights. But then 6K and below cheap plays. Really not much that stands out here. Like Jabari against the Knicks for 5,900, I guess, is a guy you could look to, but you never feel good playing Jabari. His minutes have been down recently as well. So, I mean, you don't feel great there. Under 5K for value, it, this is just kind of like a wait and see for me. Bridges, I'll like as a value if uh, Booker's out. Kevin Herter is questionable, so maybe that opens up more minutes for someone like uh, Cam Reddish or DeAndre Bembry. I know Reddish is cheap. I don't think he's small forward, though. I think he's uh, you have to play him at point guard or shooting guard. But, I mean, the Hawks just run so many dudes. Like, even with Herter potentially being out for this game, that's not going to, like, there's not going to be a big beneficiary there. Like, they'll give two minutes to this guy, five minutes to this guy, three minutes to this guy. Like, they'll just play so many guys. Like, I hate targeting guys from the Hawks, not named Trey Young, just because of how, like, deep their rotation is, how many players they play every night. So let's just go ahead and talk about power forward now, move over to this position. So at power forward today, you got Anthony Davis at the top, 10,500. I will have interest in Davis today if he is able to play. He is questionable. Obviously, we need to keep an eye on that. I think I still per prefer LeBron for 400 more, even if Davis is in. Obviously, though, if Anthony Davis is out, I mean, LeBron James, best player on the slate, and it's not even close. Uh, but I do like Davis if he plays here against the Pacers, like, Sabonis and Turner, I mean, they can put Sabonis and Turner on him, but, like, that's just, it's a mismatch for anybody they put on Anthony Davis. Like, the dude's one of the most unguardable players in the league. He's so good, it's hard to stop him. Like, even though the Pacers are a good defensive team, you're not going to slow down LeBron and AD. Like, these guys are just on another level this season. Uh, so other power forwards that we could look to, not name Anthony Davis, not named any of the guys I talked about already. Julius Randle, that is someone I want to touch on. So he is 7K on DraftKings. Over on Yahoo, he's $26. He's probably one of my favorite power forward plays today. I love Julius Randle on both sides in this matchup against the Hawks. Uh, it is very likely that he sees defense from Jabari Parker today, and that is a very friendly matchup for Julius Randle. Jabari Parker, just not that good of a defender. I know, like, in terms of DVP, 
the, I believe the Hawks are like top three in terms of fantasy points allowed to power forwards this season. Like this is a smash spot for Julius Randle. He's playing huge minutes in competitive games, and this is a game that should stay competitive as we do have a one one and a half point spread here with a 220 total. Like Randle's been a beast this season with the Knicks. I can pull up his usage and stuff uh, just so far this season. Really the only reason he's not like an 8K to 9K player every night is because he loses minutes to blowouts and like that really hurts his upside. But I mean, lately he's played 38 minutes against the Warriors, close game, 36 minutes against Denver, close game, 31 minutes against the Kings, that was a close game. Like he's going to play 34 to 36 minutes in this game if it stays close. Uh, he has a 26% usage rate with the Knicks this season, averaging a fantasy point per minute, 18.7% assist percentage, 14.3% total rebound percentage. Uh, the one fantasy point per minute, I know his numbers in the past have been much better than that. I would expect those numbers to increase as he gets more playing time and as he just gets more familiar with this team as the team at least starts to get a little bit better, I would hope. The matchup, though, that's what really like gets me for or gets me on Randall today. Like I just love this matchup for him against the Hawks. He should absolutely dominate this front court. And 7K, it's an expensive price, so maybe people will look away from him today. I definitely think that's a mistake. Uh, but now other power forwards, I guess Marcus Morris you could look to in the mid-range. He's a fine option, but not a core play by any means. Uh, Marvin Bagley, really good matchup for him, but his minutes are still like limited. He's played uh, three games since coming back from injury, 23, 21, and 22 minutes in those three games. Unless we can get confirmation that he's going to see more minutes today, it's hard for me to go to him, even in a really good matchup. Uh, I think someone that we need to talk about is definitely Cody Zeller. So P.J. Washington is going to be out for a while, and he was out in their last game. Uh, versus the uh, Pacers and we actually saw Cody Zeller start at power forward and Bismack Biombo start at center so they went with Zeller and Biombo starting alongside each other and it was actually like it worked out for them like both guys had very productive games Zeller played 29 minutes had 40 DraftKings points I think Biombo played 27 minutes and had like 37 DK points assuming they start Zeller and Biombo alongside each other again today I will definitely have interest in Cody Zeller at 5400 uh, this is a guy that's been really productive this season when he's gotten minutes. The only reason he hasn't he hasn't gotten minutes is because him and Biombo have pretty much been splitting the center minutes. Well, now if we're getting Biombo and Zeller playing alongside each other, that obviously means you're going to see more minutes from both those guys since, since they're not going to be taking away minutes from each other. Love that Cody Zeller is power forward eligible on DK. It's a bit uh, tougher to play him on Yahoo because you have to play him at center, and you do have Biombo for a little bit cheaper. Plus, you have some other mid-range options at center that you could look to. Uh, but I still think Cody Zeller is a strong play today, especially if he starts again, 5,400. Like, that could have been a matchup thing going up against the Pacers. Since the Pacers do have a big front court and they have some bonus and Turner that they start, like, there's a chance they don't start Zeller today. We'll just kind of have to wait and see. This is a 7 o'clock game, so we should know before lock. Uh, but because both guys had solid games, I'd imagine that that's what they're going to do again. Uh, but the guy that I want to talk about, uh, power forward, is Rashawn Holmes. So he is 5K on DraftKings. He has seen his price really come down uh, just due to the fact that his minutes have been a little bit down because of Marvin Bagley coming back. Him and Marvin Bagley have been splitting the center minutes evenly, or not evenly, but they've been splitting the center minutes, which isn't great for Rashawn Holmes. Like, I would prefer that Bagley take minutes away from, like, Bielitsa and that you'll see, like, or that we could see maybe Bagley and Holmes play alongside each other. But that hasn't been the case recently, so obviously that's scary here. But the matchup is so good for Rashawn Holmes against the Hornets. Hornets have allowed the second most fantasy points to center this season. Even if Holmes plays like 28 minutes, he can still get 34, 36 DraftKings points in this spot. I mean, he put up 39 DK points in 35 minutes earlier this season against the Hornets. Like, I love Rashawn Holmes here. I have a feeling he's going to go overlooked today because of the poor play and that his minutes are down. But I still expect him to play probably mid-20s, if not upper 20s in minutes. We should definitely see him and Bagley play alongside each other in the future. I don't think they're just going to split the center minutes all season. Like we, We're going to see those guys play alongside each other eventually. It uh, could definitely happen here, especially if the Hornets do start Zeller and Biombo alongside each other. Like If they go big, play that big front court, uh, we could definitely see Bagley and, Favors, or Bagley and Holmes uh, start alongside each other, play alongside each other in this game. So really like, uh, really like Rashawn Holmes on DraftKings at 5K, power forward and center eligible. A little bit tougher to go to him on Yahoo. I don't think I'm going to have as much interest in him on Yahoo today. You have to play him at center, and he's $21 as well. Like, you got Zeller for 15 You got Biombo for 12 I probably just prefer to go to, those, uh, go to those guys or try and get up to someone like Jared Allen for 27
So my interest in Holmes is mainly on DK at 5K. Uh, Derek Favors, great matchup for him today, but he's just been really bad since coming back from injury. He's played two games uh, since coming back, 15 and 20 minutes, 18, 15 DraftKings points. Like He hasn't been very productive. The minutes haven't been great either. He is still on a minutes limit, though, so we're going to have to wait and see if he's going to be limited again today. I would imagine he's going to be limited. Like He'll probably play like 25 minutes today. I mean, at 4,600, 25 minutes of Derek Favors, like he could easily go for 30 DraftKings points in this in this matchup against Brooklyn. But since you do have Rashawn Holmes for a little bit more, I think I'd prefer to go to Rashawn Holmes today. Uh, but if we get word that Derek Favors is not going to be on a minutes limit, then uh, he's one of the best values at 4,600. I do expect him to be more productive uh, than what he has been as of late. I mean, he's been a very productive player uh, just throughout his career, been over a point per minute guy. But yeah, I think we covered power forward. Let's run through center real quick uh, just before we end the video. So touching on some centers that I like today that I haven't already talked about. Not much at the top that I haven't already talked about. Like Sabonis, tough matchup for him against the Lakers. I mean, 8K, I didn't really touch on him at power forward, but I just don't think I want to go to Sabonis on today's slate. There's other guys I would look to. It's a tough spot. I, I, there's just other places I'd rather go. So in the mid-range, I think Jared Allen against the Pelicans with his price coming down due to like poor play recently. He's had two like tough matchups against the uh, almost said the Eagles against the Raptors and the Sixers. Uh, 22 and 19 DK points in those games. Only played 25 and 22 minutes. Much better matchup today for Jared Allen against the Pelicans, and his price is down to 6,400 on DK. So I definitely have interest in, interest in him in that mid-range at center. Uh, in the 5K range, you do have Cody Zeller that you can play here, who I do like quite a bit. Uh, but there are some values I want to touch on at the position. So Bismack Biombo. Really like him as a value to play today at 4,800. He played 28 minutes the last game against the Pacers. And like I said earlier, Bismack Biombo and Cody Zeller started alongside each other in that game. Biombo was very productive, even playing alongside Zeller. He put up 37 DK points, had 11 points, 17 rebounds, 2 assists, and 1 block. Uh, it was just a very solid game from him. I'd imagine he probably plays about 28 to 30 minutes again today. And Zeller probably plays about the same as well. That game was a little bit of a blowout. I'm not sure if Biombo lost minutes in that game due to blowout. I would imagine that he might have, but 4,800 for him against the Kings. Kings aren't nearly as bad like defensively against bigs as they have been in the past, but I still really like Biombo at this salary. I think projecting him for close to 30 minutes makes a lot of sense, especially if he's going to continue to start alongside Cody Zeller. That's much. It's much more likely that he doesn't lose minutes and that he actually plays big minutes most nights. Uh, so he's a top value for me at the center position. Really like him on Yahoo as well at $12. You could argue that Cody Zeller could be the better option, but I think I'd probably take the little bit of savings and play Biombo over Zeller today. And then you have favors you could look to as a value. Uh, Aaron, ha Aaron Baines, I think, is a fine value as well. I was surprised that they didn't start him on Monday night against Hassan Whiteside. Still came off the bench, but I know in like the first five minutes off the bench, Aaron Baines was able to put up like 9 or 10 DK points. Like He's going to be a productive player even coming off the bench. And against the Clippers, uh, you could look there for 4,600. And then obviously we need to touch on these uh, Lakers big. So if An or if Anthony Davis is out today, JaVale McGee is one of the best value plays on the slate at 3,900. Like we saw this earlier this season. Uh, I think it was like a, it was a late night game or something. Anthony Davis was out and JaVale McGee and Dwight Howard, like the news came out after lock. So like not many people were able to get on McGee or Howard. Both of them were pretty low owned, and JaVale McGee went for like 50 DraftKings points, and Dwight Howard went for like 30 DK points. Both guys played a good amount of minutes. If Anthony Davis is out today, JaVale McGee should be locked into pretty big minutes. He's a very productive player uh, when he's on the floor. I mean, the dude put up 35 DK points in 17 minutes. Like, he's been playing mid teens in minutes this season. It's much more likely he gets like the 26 to 28 minutes today if Anthony Davis is out. So I'm going to love JaVale McGee if we get that news that Davis sits. Luckily, this is a 7 o'clock game, so we will know before lock if Davis plays or not. And then Dwight Howard as well for 4K would be a great value uh, along with JaVale McGee. And honestly, if you wanted to, you could play both guys in the same lineup. I don't think it's the worst idea. If I had to choose one, though, I would side with McGee only if Anthony Davis is out. Obviously, if Anthony Davis plays, I really don't have any interest in either guy. Uh, but yeah, guys, thanks. We covered everything for center. I think we pretty much broke down the slate position by position. Uh, hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. Hopefully it helped you. If you enjoyed, make sure you drop a like down below. As always, I greatly appreciate that. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. You can click that notification bell as well 
so that way you get notified every time I upload. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, uh, link down below, at DFS by Noah. You can stay up to date with me over on Twitter. And like I said at the beginning of the video, if you want to check out all the exclusive content I have available on Patreon, you can do so, link down below, patreon.com slash DFS by Noah. I have a ton of NBA content that I post over there throughout the day. I post my NBA content Monday through Friday. You can get access to all my videos, my private videos I post on Patreon, my articles, my updated core plays. If you just want to get all my updated in-depth content, updated thoughts on the slate, uh, you can check out the Patreon. And if you do join uh, the Patreon by Christmas, if you do become a member, you will get access to join our $100 free roll contest that I'll be running on the Christmas Day slate, have a chance to win $100, but you definitely have to be a Patreon member to get access to that. Uh, but I think that's everything, guys. Covered everything. Hope you enjoyed the video. Appreciate you watching. Good luck tonight. Peace.